in this activity you will install the structural support components for the floor. The structural support components for the floor can be found in the foundation. One of the structural components you will install will be a 4 inch diameter steel column. The steel columns are indicated by the small circular shapes in the foundation plan. In section AA on page 11 of your construction documents you will see the 4 inch diameter column indicated here. The 4 inch diameter column will support a wood girder. To lay out the positions for the 4 inch diameter columns we will use a grid system in the building information model where the grids intersect will be the location of each of the 4 inch diameter columns. In your project browser you will need to make sure that the TOF floor plan view is active. You will do this by double clicking on TOF in the project browser under the floor plan views. We will first create our horizontal grid line. The horizontal grid line we are about to create represents the girder that you see here in the foundation plan. In the TOF floor plan view, in order to create the grid line, you will need to select your architecture tab. In the datum panel of the ribbon, you will select grid. You will place your cursor outside or to the right of the right vertical wall in the foundation plan. You will click outside of that foundation wall, drag your cursor to the left until it is outside of the left vertical wall and click. You will select the number or the letter that is in the bubble and change it to the letter A and press enter. The horizontal grid line that was just created is 12 feet 5 inches from the bottom horizontal wall in the foundation. To add a dimension to the horizontal grid line, you will need to select the annotate tab. In the dimension panel of the annotate tab, you will select aligned dimension. In the place dimensions, we want to change this option to say faces of core. We want to reference the core of the foundation wall. So we'll select faces of core. We will select the bottom line that represents the foundation wall. We will click there. We will take the dimension and click on the horizontal grid line. We will place this dimension here. In order to change this dimension, we'll select our Modify button to clear out the dimension tool. We will click on the horizontal grid line. 
and we will select the dimension that we just added. We will change the dimension to say 12 feet 5 inches and press enter. Click on that dimension and lock it. Next we will add four vertical grid lines. To do so select the architecture tab in the datum panel select grid. You would take your cursor and click above the horizontal foundation wall bring drag it down and click outside of the bottom horizontal foundation wall you will repeat this process three other times You will change the vertical grid lines. You will change those values to numerical values. So the first one will be number one. Press enter. Two, three, four. You will place dimensions to horizontally locate the vertical grid lines. To do so, you will select your Annotate tab. In the Dimension panel, you will select Aligned Dimension. You will select the exterior face of the foundation wall to the left. You will click there. And then click on each of the vertical grid lines. and your last selection will be to the exterior side of the foundation wall to the right. Then you will place these dimensions by clicking. The first vertical grid line is 8 feet 4 inches from the exterior side of the foundation wall. That is consistent with the dimension here that is 8 feet 4 inches from the exterior side of the foundation wall to the location of the first column. This information can be found in your foundation plan. So to make the first vertical grid line 8 feet 4 inches from the foundation wall you will need to select the grid line in the dimensions that you just placed you will select the first dimension and change that to say 8 feet 4 inches and press enter according to the foundation plan the distance between the first column and the second column is 8 feet. So in our model, you will need to select the second vertical grid line, change the dimension to say 8 feet, and press enter. The distance between the second column and the third column is 8 feet. So in your model select the third vertical grid line, select the dimension, change that to say 8 feet and press enter. As you make changes to the dimensions, once you enter the dimension that you need, you will need to make sure that you lock the dimension. 
the distance between the third column and the fourth column is 8 feet. To place the proper distance between the vertical grid line 3 and vertical grid line 4, select vertical grid line 4 and change the dimension to 8 feet and press enter. Then lock that dimension as well as the last dimension. In order to place the 4 inch diameter steel columns you will need to select your structure tab in the structure panel select column. You will need access to a 4 inch diameter pipe column. So what you will need to do is in the ribbon you will need to locate load family. If you do not see the load family folder immediately show up in your ribbon up in the tabs area you should see a small gray button you may need to click on this button several times in order for the load family folder to appear so you may have to click on this button and cycle through the different menu options until you see the load family folder appear the load family dialog box should appear. In the load family dialog box you will scroll until you see a folder for structural columns and you will double click on that. In the structural columns folder you will double click on the one that says steel. In this folder, you are looking for a pipe column family. So you will click on pipe column and click on open. In the types, you are looking for a 4 inch standard pipe column. which is this option here. So you will select it and click on OK. So in your properties you should have access to the pipe column object. To place the pipe column you will need to select your structure tab in the structure panel you will need to select column in the ribbon you will locate the option that allows you to place the columns at grid intersection so you will select at grid intersection you will select grid A and grid 1. There you should be able to see the column placed at that location. You will select finish and repeat the process. You will 
click on the modify button to end the command you should be able to see the four columns placed at the intersection of the grid that you created you are to create a building section so you can see the columns that you just placed in section view to do so select the view tab in the create panel of the view ribbon select section in the properties make sure that building section is selected you would take your cursor and place it outside of the foundation wall to the left and click drag the cursor to the right outside of the foundation wall to the right and click in the project browser you will scroll in the project browser until you find the option that says sections building section click on the plus sign beside that and double click on the word section one this will create the section view of the building as you can see in the building section here are your columns so we will need to adjust positioning of the columns in the building information model we will use the section AA that is on page 11 of your construction documents as well as we will use the top of pipe column detail and the bottom of pipe column detail on page 14 of your construction documents these views will provide information necessary to properly install the pipe column that is used to support the floor system in the building information model looking at the bottom of pipe column detail view you will notice that the bottom of the column is at the top of footing this here is the footing for the pipe column so the bottom of the pipe column rests on the top of the footing the top of the column which is here is near the bottom of the joist the bottom of the floor joist serves as the ceiling for the basement if we look at this view here we will notice that there is a relationship between the top of the column and the bottom of the floor joist or the ceiling for the basement so given the information provided in the detail views and the section view in your section view of the building information model you are to select one of the columns so let's select this column here in the properties you will need to set your base level to TOF or top of footing notice that the bottom of the column is at the top of footing your top level should be set to basement ceiling the top of the column which is here is near the bottom of the joist the bottom of the floor joist serves as the ceiling for the basement in the properties for the base offset 
you will change this value to zero feet zero inches and press enter then click on apply you should see the column change where the bottom of the column is at the top of footing level this here is the top of footing level the column should be coming down to the top of footing level the next modification we need to make is to establish the proper distance between the basement ceiling level and the top of the column you should notice in this diagram that again this line here the bottom of the joist represents the basement ceiling level the distance between the basement ceiling and the top of the column is established by the 2 by 10 girder the height of the 2 by 10 girder is actually 9 and 1 fourth of an inch so you will need to select the column in the section view make sure that your top level is set to basement ceiling the top offset should be set to negative nine and one-fourth of an inch the negative tells the building information model that the negative value tells the system that the top of the column should be nine and one-fourth of an inch below the established top level so once you make these modifications click on the apply button and you should see the column is now nine and one-fourth of an inch below the basement ceiling you are to repeat this process for the other three columns so you can scroll over select each of the other three columns so we'll, se we'll select this column here change the base level should be set to TOF or top of footing the top level should be set to basement ceiling the base offset should be set to zero feet zero inches and press enter the top offset should be negative nine and one-fourth of an inch to represent the height of the 2 by 10 girder so make those changes select apply and you should see that column change position you are to do that for the other columns as well Now all of your columns are set to the appropriate heights. The next structural component that you will need to install will be the 4 by 16 block pilaster. You will see a block pilaster on this side of the foundation as well as this side here. So we will have two four by sixteen block pilasters 
to install the block pilaster structural columns you will need to be in your TOF floor plan view so in the project browser under floor plans double click on TOF to make that particular floor plan view active you will go to your structure tab and select column in the structure panel so you will select structural column in the ribbon you will go to load family in the load family dialog box you will scroll until you find the folder that says structural columns you will double click on the folder that says structural columns you will double click on the folder that says concrete you will open the concrete rectangular column family so select concrete rectangular column and select open here we will select the options to see if we have a 4 by 16 size concrete rectangular column among the items that we have we do not have that particular type of column so we will need to create that so we'll select the one that says 12 by 18 and go to edit type in the type properties dialog box we will duplicate the 12 by 18 type so we'll click on duplicate rename this to say 4 by 16 and click on OK for the 4 by 16 block pilaster we will need to change the base dimension to say 3 and 5 eighths of an inch the height will need to say 15 and 5 eighths of an inch we are using these values because they are masonry units and the actual size of a 4 by 16 masonry block pilaster would be 3 and 5 eighths by 15 and 5 eighths or 1 foot 3 and 5 eighths of an inch again for masonry units you subtract 3 eighths of an inch from the nominal size in order to put in the actual dimensions so we will click on apply and OK we will bring the block pilaster into the TOF floor plan view and we will click here to place it on this side and click here to place it on the right side we will click on the modify but the next thing we will need to do is to properly align the block pilaster in its proper location is click on the modify tab in the modify panel of the ribbon you will select the align tool you will take your cursor and you will first select the horizontal grid line which is labeled with letter A select the horizontal grid line then move your cursor to the middle of the 4 by 16 block pilaster and click on the line here that should align the pilaster to the grid line and you will lock that in place you will need to make sure you align the inside of the foundation wall so you will go to the align tool again select the 
inside edge of the foundation wall click there then click on the inside edge of the 4 by 16 block pilaster and click there that should align the pilaster to the foundation wall and lock it you would do the same thing to the block pilaster on the right side go to the align tool select the grid A grid line then select the middle of the 4 by 16 block pilaster and lock that then go to the align tool again click on the inside edge of the foundation wall click on the inside edge of the 4 by 16 block pilaster and lock that you are to click on your modify button to clear out any commands the next thing you will need to do is make sure that the block pilaster has the correct height characteristics so on the block pilaster that's to the right of the model you will select that particular um, column you will make the in the properties section you will make the base level should be set to TOF because it starts at the top of footing the top level should be set to basement ceiling the base offset should be set to zero and press enter the top offset should be negative nine and one-fourth of an inch the distance between the basement ceiling and the top of the column is established by the 2 by 10 girder the height of the 2 by 10 girder is actually 9 and 1 fourth of an inch so we will click on apply and you will make the same changes to the block pilaster to the left side of the model so you select it to bring up the properties base level should be set to top of footing top level should be set to basement ceiling the base offset should be set to zero and press enter the top offset should be set to negative nine and one-fourth of an inch and press enter and click on apply so now you have installed all of the structural columns that are necessary for the building information model you should have the four four inch diameter pipe columns you also should have two four by sixteen block pilasters